What's up, you guys? It's so sunny, so you can't see me super clear. I guess I could have picked a better parking spot, but this will do. Hopefully you can hear me. But you guys, I'm like a little, I'm bothered. I'm very much so bothered because it is truly saddening um, of how blind people are. Let me roll this window up of how blind people are. Like, uh, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me choose my words, because these are your sons and your daughters. Help me not be led by my emotions, but by your spirit and how I say what it is you are burdening me to say. In Jesus' name, amen. So, you guys, I've been seeing, like, a lot of posts, like, people will be uh, under, like, comments when a man or woman of God who is brought up to be a shepherd to the people, and this does not mean necessarily they're a pastor, it just means they are in a leadership position to guide the flock of God and they will be trying to correct the body of Christ and correction from God is love like it's his mercy right when people are rebuked which Israel was a lot in the Bible it is beautiful because it means God still is giving you grace and time to get it right. He is just telling you what you're doing is wrong. Let's fix your direction and get you in the right direction. Let's take you from going to hell eternally to going to heaven eternally so you can be restored back with me, right? And so... The thing is, and the issue is, is that when the body of Christ does not listen to a man or woman of God who he put in position to guide you, like how God had put David in position to guide Israel. He was a shepherd. God literally says, I am taking you from being a shepherd of sheep, literally, to being a shepherd of my people. Okay? And so... The thing is, and, and, and David was a prophet, you guys. He literally hears from God. He has a relationship to where it's just one connect. He has the Holy Ghost before, you know, the whole earth, you know, of those who wanted it, sons and daughters of God would get it, and which, you know, Joel speaks about. But anyways, back to my point. So, even though that's a part of my point, but anyways, so... The problem is, the body of Christ does not like correction, and that is a problem. I guess this is a rebuke, because you are, like, I hear and I read a lot in the comment where somebody will, like, make a video post or whatever, and then the people will be like, well, like, that's what you think or something, and then they'll say, like, you uh, commenting to other people, like, just go off of your conviction. Well, if you're convicted about it, if you're convicted about it, then that's for you, but that's not for me. When does the Bible say, go off of your conviction? Because I don't recall God ever saying, people, follow your conviction. He says, follow his spirit. Follow the leading of his spirit, his Holy Spirit. Follow him. Follow Jesus Christ. He does not say, follow your conviction. Because let me tell you something about conviction. Okay? Because before I gave my life, like submitted because you know i always thought i i was going to heaven even though i was sinning okay this is this is what i need you guys to understand how like when god says satan like the serpent is the craftiest beast in the field i need you to hear me okay and when he's saying the serpent he's talking about satan and that's in revelation like i've heard somebody say like the guard like the snake like the serpent in the garden of eden is not the devil it's not satan yes it is the bible says it and it says the serpent of old the devil satan like that's literally in the bible this is why we must read the word of god but hear me 
when I was in the world before like I had completely surrendered which was like God was coming for me heavy in August of 2021 because my grandma passed away at this time and so when she passed on God was like help me God I don't even know why I'm about to cry mm. but um wow help me God but when she passed on her mantle got passed on and even when God was rebuking me because he rebuked me when I was telling him no like I know what what this means if I say yes to you and fall in line like and I'm not ready for that God like I'm chasing this music and this is what I want and the Lord literally rebuked me when this beautiful woman of God was praying for me my friend and she was praying for me and the lord rebuked me when i was telling him like no and he you know it was like a salt of paul movement like it was not a choice it was not a choice you know he rebuked me and and he made me come into agreement with him by giving me peace about it and so i said okay god and you guys prior to that i was in the world chasing music i was doing my own things you guys i would go to the clubs. you guys i even like way before like i was a cusser no at this time i was a fluent cusser i would cuss and not even know i'm cussing okay i was fluent because i was cussing since a little girl right but still full of the holy ghost like at the time my god was still using me maybe but the thing was is that i wasn't fully surrendered so god would still speak through me like i would have people in school who would just be like can you pray for me and they wouldn't want to tell me their business and i'm like you don't have to because i'm like god's gonna tell me anyways when i pray for you and so whenever i would pray it would always be what they needed right i'm a fluent cusser you guys like i said i would be going to the club like i was living in the world i had no conviction off of going to the club i had no conviction off of cussing you guys i would be praying on the phone with my friends and sometimes i would be cussing as i'm praying and i remember one time she said to me you do know god is holy like and you're cussing and i'm like girl i said me and god have like a relationship like he ain't worried about none of that and you guys he answered my prayers so i'm in delusion and deception to the t you know but the thing is god's love is unwavering it never fails he never leaves us nor forsakes us the only time he separates from us is when we die and you know our body our soul like is going to heaven or to hell like that is the only time of separating that's why people are confused in the earth realm they don't understand it's a mixture of heaven and hell god is giving us both to figure out which one do you want to go to which god capital g god which is the god i'm talking about or the lowercase g god who you'll go to hell and you'll like he's your master whoever you serve on the earth is what you get in full so the good that we get you get all of it times a hundred like borrow notation no ending of goodness of god or you get satan you get all of the evil one of the others hell is literally the absence of god and that's deep right now like like god's love like he's merciful his mercy endures forever even while we're sinning his mercy if we still have air in our lungs it is mercy because a lot of us would be in hell if we died in the sin and the life and the decisions we are making right now and so i did not have no conviction when i would perform and i'm performing in clubs i'm performing in bars i'm performing and gosh i ain't gonna tell all my business but you get the point and so like i had no conviction i had no conviction are you getting it but after when god came for me august of 2021 you guys and i said yes he started the the sanctification process like i went straight into fasting like my friend taught me how to properly fast the right way and i went into fasting and then praying for three months straight you guys for three months straight 
all I could do was read the word. And you guys, his desire, his zeal was all on me. So I, I, the grace was on me to do all this. I would not go to no friends. I was not calling them. Only one girl who God had assigned to raise me up, you guys, and disciple me. And so we were fasting and I was fasting all the time, praying all the time. Like I've seen miracle signs and wonders. Like I understand the spiritual realms. I've seen demons. Like I've, man... I've seen a lot, okay? But my point is, like, the only time I started to get conviction, more conviction, is when I fasted and I would pray and God literally took me back to the Garden of Eden. He literally re renewed my mind. He got me into classes and into things that would raise me up as quickly as he needed me to be. He had somewhere for me to go, so he transformed my life within three months, three months i've seen more than i've ever seen in my whole life just by surrendering unto him and then i was not allowed i was not listening to secular music i was not watching secular movies i had no desire because my prayer was when i was doing the water fast for three days i would just say god take away my desires give me your desires take away my desires give me your desires and literally to where i had no desires i didn't even want to be a singer i wanted nothing other than just him i didn't know what else. i just love spending time with him i had no other desires and then eventually years like a year or two later, he started to give me desires for things, but other things that aligned with his will for my life. But before I had no desire, I just, I had no desires, but I would just go and pray. I'd worship, listen to worship music, like to, and he would not let me go anywhere. And I used to be like, well, God, why can't I go here? Why can't I go there? And he, all right, my phone got really hot and so it turned off. But anyways, I could not go anywhere and he would say, I am not sending you out. He would say, I am not sending you out until you are fortified or else everything that I've taught you, they'll be able to convince you otherwise right because he was getting me really familiar with his voice and his desires and things like that so he's like you can't go until you're fortified and so I'm like okay and so my thing is though you guys it's like when I finally went back to the world like listening well not listening to none of that but like when he started to send me out into the, these places I would be so sensitive to even things I used to do that I never had conviction of I would be so sensitive that everything that was normal to me that I was fine with started to make me feel uncomfortable okay back to what I was saying let me try to adjust this there we go so anyways you guys what I was saying so God was saying like he can't send me back out into the world until I've been fortified until like everything that he's been instilling in me and everything he's been preparing me for like I am ready to carry it out <laughs> God it's so funny he just let the sun come on but and, like the light anyways and that's what he did though and so he was like i'm not letting you go until you are fortified to go against you know the things he just delivered me on because he just invested so much time in like reprogramming my brain and breaking systems even things that were like cultural beliefs and traditions that we practiced like as a habisha like you know i'm airy tree and so it's like even things that correlate with what I was brought up in right in the systems of things you know religious wise like cultural wise like practices just all these things he had delivered me from and just from living here in the U.S. where it's like a melting pot of so many different cultures and backgrounds and lowercase g gods you know what i'm saying and, and demonic practices from different cultures like even the things that i was taught in my own culture you know and things we practice and believe and so he had broke all those things off to fortify me so when i was going back i wasn't conforming to the systems he just delivered me from right and the bible talks about like how god has taken us out of darkness into light but the thing is is because we're like well i don't have conviction on it or i'm not convicted so it must not be wrong right 
and i'm saying this even because me you know what i'm saying the life I, I didn't have conviction when i was sinning in the world living my best life like the best that the world had to offer me like and i didn't have conviction in a lot of the places it wasn't until god took me back to the garden of eden it wasn't until he separated me from everybody called me into the secret place and started revealing things and stripping me of everything that the devil had planted in my mind everything that he made normal everything that he made like me blind to you know like i did not think those things were wrong because of my perspective what i was brought up in you know and even just being in america right like just and it's not even just america wherever you are like what's normal to you and what you don't have conviction on is what you're used to like a lot of crazy things happen in a household but are normal to you until you get out of the household and you realize everybody doesn't live like this this isn't common like it's not normal for every guy in the neighborhood like to die at a young age like in these songs of like the good die young like what and you know are just like it's not normal for like women uh, to not be getting married like you know everybody in like the community or everybody who is raised from this certain area or in this family it's not normal but you don't know that unless you literally let the lord transform your mind that's why the bible says be transformed daily like renew your mind daily in the things of christ like god had to deal with me three days three times different scriptures like things would come on the tv the radio um i'd see like on billboards or signs or like in in the bible like and he would say the same thing until something broke this is why i'm like i love the lord because he was so patient so understanding and took his time with me and breaking these things off and renewing me and he's still faithful till this day that was what 2021 is 2024 now october and so i think like 29th maybe 2024 and it's like he's still sustaining me he's still protecting the work he did he pulled me in to like separate me to sanctify me to clean me up so that now that my eyes are open and my ears are open and my heart is open and he renewed me now I can go back and grab you guys and so all of this is his love rebuke is his love correction is love like come on like why is correction so wrong like when you go to school and you take a test like and your teacher's been preparing you for this and then you get all the answers wrong are you mad at the teacher because she or she or he marks it and said this is wrong when the answer is wrong like i don't understand like <laughs> wrong is wrong right is right and just because you're con like you don't have the conviction for something doesn't mean that it's not wrong and just because you don't have a conviction of something does not mean it's not wrong because let me tell you the bible also says like god will give you over to a reprobated mind <clears throat> If he's trying to tell you something over and over, but you just won't listen, he will give you over to a reprobated mind. He will just let you go. <sighs> and that's just what it is. And then if you, there's some areas where you'll listen to him and you know, he will continue to tell you those things. Why? Because we live for others, not for ourselves. Like Jesus died to save everybody you know what i'm saying it wasn't for him it didn't save him he was already seated in heavenly place at the right hand of god like do you get what i'm saying like he died for us so we could be with him in paradise and so my thing is don't let your conviction be what makes something right or wrong but let the holy ghost in the word of god the bible right let that be your determining factor of should i be doing this or shouldn't i be doing this it's his word 
not your opinion. And I'm talking to Christians. I am talking to the children of God. Like you do know that people who were Israelites also died. Everybody who was, you know, who is the children of God, like the children of Israel, right? All of them don't go to heaven. All of them don't make it to the promised land. A lot of them die. We saw Korah. Korah. He died. He was talking about Moses trying to take over. The earth opened his mouth and swallowed him. And a bunch of other people. So, like, and that's not the only time. Like, everybody who God wants to save and get to the promised land does not make it. But it's up to you on whether or not you want to be one of the ones who make it. You know, that's why the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and with trembling. It is up to you. And if you don't have conviction and you're not sensitive to the things of God, then you're going to be practically practicing sin knowingly and unknowingly. I was practicing sin knowingly and unknowingly and I did not realize how deep and how like convinced I was that some things were good like I was such a big feminist you hear me I was pro like abortion like before the Lord wheeled me in and had me fasting and had me praying and reading his word I would read every single day like when he pulled me in like i'm like reading every single day i'm fasting i'm praying like i am just i mean revelation on my my mind still to this day like only god could be god right and the thing is it's like it was not until i fasted and i prayed and i would just spend all this time with him and read his word and then he would give me deeper insight and deeper revelation that i started to realize like a lot of my way of thinking was wrong and that i was literally going to be leading generations to hell but i had to go spend time with my father and i had to see like he sees and hear like he hears and feel like he feels like to understand and to see and then when you do that then you start to like have the understanding and then it starts to break your heart for the things that breaks his heart you know like i remember maybe like 2022 2023 i was going to a specific church and i was in like one of their groups and i remember just the guy who was in the group he said like he was talking about the scripture that says like the more knowledge you have the more sorrow you'll have and i remember thinking at that time because god like was just teaching me so much that i'm like mm, this wisdom and all this knowledge and revelation he's giving me i was like i'm not sad like this is like you know this is beautiful but the but now as time has went by like and the more knowledge i have the sadder it gets because you realize more people are lost than you know and it's in the little things that you practice daily that become the stronghold and the bondage like that's why you know in the bible i think it's david who says it. it's in psalms and he's like the lord is my stronghold and um and what does that mean like you spend so much time with the lord that he is your stronghold and so it's crazy i remember one time i was going to a church event this was like 2023 20, because i think it was about the time where the lord was telling me to leave um and i remember like this guy who's well known he's on tv you you would know him came to the church well you might and he's actually that pastor's um spiritual father right and i remember he was talking to all of us and he was like 
telling his testimony and then he was having like people dance and turn around i remember i was so excited and i'm like turn around i'm spinning like he's telling us to do and god is like what are you doing like he god like to me he says what are you doing <laughs> like he's not talking about me like and i'm just like what when and then the lord this is like sometimes god will do this where something just turns into a movie so it's like slow-mo and i remember because they had like the monitors too and in the guys on the monitor and i remember like i'm turning and i see all these people with their hands up and they're like screaming and stuff like this and i'm looking at them and the lord is literally showing me them and he said all of these lost sheep all of these lost sheep looking for me and i'm not here and they don't know it <sighs> and they don't even know it but they're so hungry and they're so thirsty that they don't even know it but they don't know it but they're in the hands of somebody who serves a demonic kingdom and I remember it broke my heart and it made me so sad and around that time like God was teaching me like how much he loves his people to where I could feel his heart that I would spend days and times in my room at the church and I'm crying because of how much God yearns for his people but his people are looking for him in the wrong places they're not reading their word they're not speaking giving their lives to him they come on a sunday and that's as much of him that they'll eat like from the scriptures like they're not really building the relationship so while there's this false teacher leading them they can't even tell that it's not him and i would spend some so many days like crying i would just i'd be crying and y'all coming from the world and the type of music and the person I was like my heart was stony it, it was not just soft <laughs> but I would just be I would be crying because I could feel his heart for his people how much he loves his people how much he's trying to save his sheep but his sheep won't come to him and this is where idolatry comes in so they can't even see and you know god does all this teaching even sometimes i'll read a comment not on my post but on somebody else's post and it's like god they are truly lost they don't even know like i was watching a guy yesterday who's like coming up on the rise like in the, in the tv it just picked him to come on i wasn't gonna watch this stuff but it just came on after i got done watching something else and this guy's telling his story in like a testimony and i'm like watching and i'm reading the comments and people are like oh my god like you know they're so moved so many of them are moved and i'm like listening to this guy and i'm like he says something and I'm like that ain't even biblical and then he says something else and I'm like that ain't true <sighs> and I say God like give me yours to hear is this, if, if he's yours help me to receive him you know what I'm saying and uh, you guys it was horrible by the end well i end up asking the lord anyways like is he yours show me show me y'all and god shows me and i know like that's not his and i'm like thinking anyway i'm like i just will listen to him say all this stuff over an hour and i ain't felt you not wanting his story i was like he's a good storyteller 
I tell you that. I was like, he's a good storyteller, God. I said, but you ain't there. And that's the problem. People don't even know what God feels like to know if God is really on this person or not. And that's the sad part. I'm just going to close this message and saying like, in the time that comes, because this says like there'll be false prophets and false doctrines and many will go out and be deceived. I beg of you, read the word for yourself. Get to know God for yourself, for yourself. Read the Bible because when we all die, we are getting judged on the scripture, not your interpretation of it, not what you've been taught by the pastor, the preacher, whoever's Bible study you were going to, not off of what you thought, how you felt, how you were raised, what they taught you. That's why the Bible says be born again because a lot, we're born into the world. We're, we're all born sinners into the world, not Jesus Christ though. We are born into the world and then we're being raised by people who were born in the world too. You get what I'm saying? Like our parents, like or our grandmas and grandpa, like they're also born in the world. Only the Lord is not. So therefore, somehow the world practices are getting in us. So now we must be born again. So when you read, don't read it by yourself. Ask the Holy Ghost. Give me understanding for what the Father, my Father in Heaven, means when He says this. And take away the scales off of my eyes. Split the veil that is blocking me from seeing this. Snatch my mind back. Because the Bible says, the God of this world, lowercase g, Satan, has blinded the minds of the non-believer. That's why you don't believe. So ask the Lord to help you see and to free your mind. And ask the Lord to increase your desire to love Him and to help you understand exactly what His love is. Okay, you guys. That was the burden on my heart. I feel a lot better now. So I'm going to end it here. Alright, bye.